Good evening. My name is Dennis Argel, and welcome back to Festival Fun Facts with a Wednesday night stream here on behalf of the New Jersey State Solo and Ensemble Festival. I'm um, privileged and honored to be the director of that festival, uh, working with Arts Ed New Jersey, the New Jersey Arts Advocacy Organization, um, and partnering with Music for All, who has powered our festival with regard to the registration and adjudication through Competition Suite. We are fortunate to be here this evening for our seventh live stream in a series of seven nights, the last one until after the spring. I know you'll miss us on a Wednesday. What will you do with your Wednesday nights now for that seven to eight hour? We'll find something for you to do because we're going to be back after the spring in state to talk about those students. What we try to do on this live stream is to bring to life the stories of the students uh, and to try to uh, further shine some light on their accomplishments and all their efforts. Um, again, we had our over uh, 1,000 registrations with over 900 submissions for our uh, winter festival. Uh, that yielded 162 gold star students. Uh, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute as we meet some of them. Uh, and hundreds and hundreds more who received silver and bronze medals uh, and then developing and emerging musicians uh, rated by adjudicators from all over the country. And now, uh, as many of you know, we have, we're in the throes of the submission process for the sp uh, Spring and State Festival. Just want to remind everybody who is uh, involved that the video and PDF submissions, or if you're putting in a video with your score, remember those are due by May 15th, okay? So today's the 5th. We got another 10 days worth, okay? If you have any questions about any of those items, uh, you can give me a, an email. Uh, there it is, Dennis at Arts Ed New Jersey. And I'll be happy to do the best I can to get back to you to answer that, okay? So remember, by May 15th. Uh, and then once the students uh, submit the videos, these judges, two of whom we'll meet this evening, um, start to review your footage and your scores and your musicianship. Uh, from May 16th through the 31st. So they'll have two weeks to review, just like they did for the winter uh, event. If you knew, that takes a couple of weeks. It's, it's a two weeks of anxiety as we're waiting for our ratings. And then the first week of June, uh, we share with the students through Competition Suite uh, the ratings that the judges assign them and their commentary. Uh, and just a, a, another review for those of you, especially those who are new to us, uh, we put together a rubric that's uh, the highest score a student can attain uh, in the rating, because it's not a competition, it's a festival. We're celebrating each individual student's musicianship and their, their work effort. Um, it's a 30-point rubric. There are three categories, uh, tone and intonation, technique, and musicianship. And each one of those three areas is worth 10 points for a total of 30. Uh, tonight you will meet uh, four students uh, who um, participated in the winter, and we all received gold stars, okay, gold one stars. Um, but before we get to meet the students, I would like to bring in, um, and, and our, our focus this evening is very special. Uh, uh, we were very fortunate early on in the process uh, as we got a lot more students involved than I initially anticipated. I needed a lot more judges. I reached out to my friends and colleagues uh, uh, of the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, and we were able to um, acquire some unbelievable talent, um, great musicians, great people, uh, great teachers to come on board and participate as adjudicators for the festival. And I have two of them with us this evening. I'd like to bring them in at this point. Uh, say hello to Mr. Brennan Sweet and Mr. Andy Lamy. Uh, How are you? Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. A pleasure. Nice to be uh, here. Thanks. You want to you introduce yourself? Tell us, tell us who you are with the symphony. Those of you who don't know. Who goes first? Well, you <laughs> go know, ahead, Andy. I'll go first because I was in the symphony two years when you took your audition. <laughs> and I, we were so happy to have you join on. And I was the young kid, and then you were like the next young kid. True. And, you know, we've survived <laughs> a few decades since then. So here That's we right. are. Getting our so, 10,000 hours of expertise in. in the so, Andy, what do you do with the symphony for those of us, those who are watching? Okay, I'm a clarinetist. I play second clarinet and piccolo, the E-flat clarinet, and I play assistant principal clarinet, and I often play bass clarinet, and um, I crack jokes. <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear, well, at least we'll hear some of the jokes. I'm not sure about the clarinet tonight, but we'll see. It's early. Never, it's early. Yeah, they're unpredictable. I, I don't see them coming ever. They're usually How happy. about you, Brendan? 
Mr. Sweet. My name is Brennan Sweet. I am the associate concert master of New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, which means I sit in the first in the first stand, uh, right under the conductor's nose, <laughs> and um, have been there for a number of years now. What twenty? This is the twenty sixth year, I think, for me. I joined the orchestra in nineteen ninety four, um, and so the years go by fast. Um, and uh, I started the violin when I was two years old, two. Wow. <laughs> so it's before I remember actually anything. So I've always been playing the violin. Um, and originally I started out in engineering. I went to Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, and I began engineering. I, was, I saw some of the first IBM PCs come out. I knew that was wow. the future. And I got into coding. So I did a bunch of coding wow. and stuff like that. But then music really called me and I went to India University uh, where I was for several years and the rest is history. So <laughs> yeah. well, engineering, prin associate principal, it's about the same, right? <laughs> well, I've always had this interest of, um, oh, and here's another interesting factoid. I used to play the French horn. So oh. I actually, I have the experience of actually playing a wind instrument. And I always feel like for string players, that's a good thing, you know, We it, that gives us a sense of breathing, you know, because one of the things we don't do much as a string player is breathe. And, and that's one of the main things we can do uh, in ensemble is to breathe together. That's, so um, this breathing thing is kind of important. <laughs> well, I, I was, you know, I was thrilled when I spoke to Judy and was, and was able to, to um, get both of you on, and we'll bring Judy Lee on in a little bit. Um, as adjudicators for the festival, you and I. French horn too. Is it, uh, all, I'm sorry, Dandy. The great French hornets. Uh, thank you. Oh, Judy <laughs> is. Are, you are no, absolutely, absolutely yes. Um, you know, we we met uh, years ago when I was with the Elizabeth Public Schools, and we had those side by side concerts, and we had the fortunate. Uh, you know, I, I saw you both working with the students at the Elizabeth Schools, and just knew how you know how how uh, empathetic and kind and generous you were with your time and how great you were with your advice and counsel to these young musicians. I was thrilled to have you on board for this. How, how did you how did you guys like the formatting of being able to provide that kind of feedback in a, in a remote setting, in this case, in the festival? Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Brennan. Um, I defer to you. You'll, you'll go first next time. Um, I think that the, the remote setting is very, very difficult for everybody. And it's good to try to somehow reach across the flat screen and find some way to connect. And I was very concerned that my co comments wouldn't land correctly, that people would take things personally. And so I found myself, instead of giving six minutes of commentary, giving 19 minutes of commentary because I wanted <laughs> to take the time yeah. and be clear and, and show different ways of thinking about things. So. Right. Uh, I did enjoy it. I, I like to pick up an instrument and demo or, or try to sing. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, everyone who submitted recordings in this environment uh, was quite gritty and brave to do that. I think you just get bonus points right off the bat. Thank you. And then uh, for, <clears throat> so for myself, I mean, this was, uh, this was a new paradigm for me. Um, I was, of course, very aware of, you know, the events of the last year and what, and, you know, I, I, my own daughters are also in music and, and they've been dealing with things at the college level, the high school level. I know, I mean, it, it's been such a tough time for young people. I mean, for everybody, but, you know, young people, it's just, I mean, they're totally, they've been cut off. So um, congratulations to everyone who got it together and did their, uh, did their video. Uh, it was interesting. I, 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 when I first started, I start, I, I had to resist the urge to kind of rewind and stuff. So I set myself up. I wanted to kind of give a live, um, uh, kind of get my first impressions, uh, live as I heard it. Uh, so in a, in a more like casual way, just a very casual way. So I kind of set myself up. So I had the laptop and I had uh, my iPhone recording and I just kind of played the video so you can hear it. And then I stopped the video and I can, and I made comments. So that way you just kind of got a sense of where I was coming from. You could hear what you did as a, as a student. And then what my reaction was to that, um, and I hope it. I hope it worked. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it, yeah, we, we yeah. were able to. Uh, I'm, go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. No, I mean it's it's hard to not have that connection and know how it lands. It's hard to not know how 
people individually react. Sure, sure. And this is, you know, this is a brand new event for all of us. Uh, because and, and when we when we put this together, we were really trying to get great feedback for the students. In any way, it was, I mean, judges, the adjudicators had a very different approach depending on what they were comfortable with, right? Um, the good news was you had the ability to make that stop, have a statement. So you weren't talking over the next phrase or, you know, or, or you, you know, um, uh, articulating something that you, you missed a whole passage because we were talking over it. So, and then there were some that were doing it in real time. So it, it, all the students and teachers have been very, very uh, positive about the feedback. So we're thrilled oh, about that. Uh, you said, seemed like you wanted to say something else, Brian. I was interrupting. Um, yeah. So, so, so my uh, my intention was to try and uh, you know, because usually if we didn't have this paradigm going on, we would be live, right? We'd be hearing people come in, play live, and we'd be making our comments. So, I kind of wanted to get that kind of live aspect to it, um, you know. So it's just. Uh, and that kind of uh, realize that live aspect um, instead of kind of I I was thinking if I was just making comments it may have been hard to know what I was relating it to I, um, I don't know it, it was hard to decide which way to do this <laughs> also right, right. I have to say that when I first began um, I found myself being uh, like super critical which was not so good <laughs> and. Uh, I needed a little adjustment in my in my thinking, and my wife. I have to credit my wife, who is herself an orchestra director. She's a cellist, um, at our, and she's orchestra director at Arts High School in Newark. And she sat down with me and kind of gave me clued me in to, you know, just uh, what's involved here and and how to grade. Um, uh, students and everything, and that's it's hard for us as professionals. I mean, we've we've developed extremely critical ears here, so sure, uh, sure. it's. Uh, but you know, I I have to say I'm I'm so impressed um, with what with what all the students did at every level, and you know, and and, and you know, more power to them. And uh, I I yeah. hope it was a great experience for them too. <laughs> so it's a, a real learning experience have, for me. Is it you, Dennis, that you hired some English football? Sports announcers to do play-by-play -play on this next round. I think that's the next step, Andy. We're going to take it <laughs> to the next level. Right. You know, somebody hits thirty, they're going to go goal. You know, just I mean, just you know, just for that, instead of gold one star, it'll, go, it'll end up there. What? So yeah, we have a couple of minutes before I want to bring on one of the students and her teacher to meet you, uh, Brennan, um, as you were her adjudicator, and it would be wonderful to have this conversation uh, for the first time together. But I want to ask you both, as students are now practicing and preparing and going over their you know, oh my gosh, is this the right take to submit to the judges? What do you, what's your advice? What, what, what can you tell them to do to prepare for this next 10 days before they enter the state and spring festival? Um, okay, I suppose I'll go first this time, right? <laughs> it's me now. Well, there's a few things. I mean, what can you do in just a matter of a week or two? And I would say uh, the more you can get comfortable in the environment, um, just kind of get used to recording yourself and uh, just do s several runs, you know, and, and then play it back. And I know how hard it is. it's so hard for me to watch myself play and to listen to myself play, but I encourage you to look at it and just take a look at your presentation. You'll hear things, you know, it's a lot different to hear your hear someone else play than to play yourself. You know, it's just totally different. So it's important to, to get comfortable doing that. Um, also, my recommendation, I always say, is that if you're making these recordings, you can go crazy uh, with take after take after take and nothing's quite right. And you just you can drive yourself crazy. So I think just prepare as best you can and then say, OK, I'm just going to do like three takes. You know, I'm just going to go through three times and then listen to them, get some other people to listen to them and just select the best one. None of them will be absolutely perfect, um, okay. but you just you know, and just submit that and, and just, you know, know that we're, that what we're listening for are, you know, consistent issues, you know, so if there's like an intonation, you know, if you miss one note here or there or something, it's not a big deal, you know, it really yeah. isn't. We all know how it goes. We know how it is. Um, but what we do listen for are things that are a little more consistent, you know? So if you are consistently having, uh, some issue with like a low two or something, you know, um, sure. that's something we'll catch on to. And uh, you know, th these are the kinds of things. So, um, 
Anyway, that's kind of also remember the, the last thing. Sorry, just the last sure, thing. Sure. Always remember slow is fast. I know how it as you get closer, you get a little more frantic and, and you're practicing. It's like, I just have to do this. I just have to do this. But always take a step back and just play through slowly and carefully. Trust your brain. Your brain can speed things up really fast. And the more you train your fingers very carefully on each note, you'll remember going faster. That's the key. Slow, careful practice. Great advice. Andy, I have to hear from you. What do you have to share with our kids? I'm going to try to do this at bullet points. Uh, so first of all, Brennan's advice is really excellent. Uh, let me just compliment that by saying uh, try to record early. Try to get a safety recording tomorrow or the next day. Because when you approach a recording session, there's often at the beginning a sense that, oh, I can just re-record that again. But there really is some urgency. By the time you get on the deadline and the, and the clock and you've practiced and you, and you do your recording, whatever it is, you're going to feel the pressure and you're going to feel the fatigue sure. and you're going to feel some stress. So try to leave yourself a little bit of a window so that you can take Brennan's advice. <laughs> and then if those three takes in that one day, which is a really great suggestion, aren't there, then you still can rest for a day and do it two days later. So right. that's one thing. The other thing is, the, the biggest issue with young musicians, um, the ones in 1775 and the ones today, is that they have to learn by listening. You can be the world's best sight reader, but if you are, if you're a great sight reader, that's only because you learned the style by ear at some point from teachers, from masters. And I can't emphasize enough how many great masterful performances are available now on YouTube and Spotify and other services and talk to a teacher of some sort and vet the recordings. There's a lot of junk out there. Um, <laughs> don't listen to grad students right away. Listen to, to <laughs> students and less famous players as a counter argument, but make the main trunk of your tree artistically, the Berlin Philharmonic and the Chicago Symphony and the Boston Symphony and the New York yeah. Philharmonic and the New Jersey Symphony New Jersey and Symphony, the yes. Francisco Symphony, etc. Listen to the great players first and yeah. really listen 75 times. I think that would be my advice that uh, Brennan didn't already say, and Brennan said a lot. So That's great. That's great. Listen, I, I, I can listen to this all night because I'm learning from the both of you. I'm, I'm going to uh, move on to the next segment. I'm going to ask Andy to go uh, hang in our, our, stu our green room. <laughs> And we have the pleasure, um, when, I, when I spoke to Brent, I asked him to select a student um, who perhaps can join us. Um, so this way a student can meet the adjudicator that gave them feedback and ratings for the uh, winter event. And we have this evening, the student that uh, Mr. Sweet selected and she, her name is Rina Ryu. I'm hoping I pronounced it correctly. And her teacher, Ms. Stephanie Ovshinsky. Hello, and nice to meet you. Wow. Good evening. They are from Creskill, New Jersey, in the Creskill Middle School. Correct, Ms. Ovshinsky? Correct. Rena is one of my sixth grade students. Wow. Sixth grade. Sixth Rena, grade. it's a pleasure to meet you, Rena. Hello. Are you, you're muted? Oh, yes. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. So just for the folks that are watching, before I let, before I'm going to have a couple of questions for Rena, then I want them to, to talk and meet each other a little bit here is, so for the folks watching, remember I said earlier that we our perfect score was out of 30. Um, and Rena is a sixth grader, and her score was a 29. Wow. So that is unbelievable. <laughs> Rena, I couldn't make it out of bed into the bathroom to brush my teeth as a sixth grader without it. <laughs> so congratulations for to you. You must be so, so happy and proud. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, that uh, so, was a wonderful performance of Chardash, the Monty Chardash. Anyway, go ahead, sir. No, no, go ahead. Please continue. I was going to ask her what she played. Have, uh, <laughs> Rina, this is Mr. Sweet. He's the gentleman Hello. who gave you the commentary and the scores. So do did you get a chance to listen to his recording? Yeah, I did. Awesome. Did you, did you listen to it with Ms. Olszynski or on your own? I listened to it on my own with my mom. Aww. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Ovshinsky, did you get a chance to listen as well? Yes, yes, I did. Okay. I listened uh, after the fact, uh, once once the scores came back. 
Okay. It's so great. Rena, what did you what did you learn from listening? What did you, what did you take with you, Bob? Um, I don't remember too much, but it's like um, uh, it's like to maybe practice a little more and then try to like make my intonations better and then maybe to make things more accurate. Okay. Okay. Mr. Street, do you remember do you, you remember what she played for goodness sake? That's amazing. <laughs> Well, I actually, uh, because we still had the recordings up on the website, I was able to actually download uh, the commentary that I gave you from before. And you know, remember how I was saying it's very uncomfortable to listen to yourself play? <laughs> it's even more uncomfortable to listen to yourself <laughs> talk. <laughs> sure, sure. So you know, again, my, my, my whole idea was just to make it very casual and just kind of give you my impressions as you're playing. And uh, mostly I was just raving about how you're playing because you're playing <laughs> wonderfully, just wonderfully. Um, and I think, so I have a couple notes here from the commentary if you're interested. Uh, one was I talked about uh, the satiado, the, the stroke where the, the bow uh, lifts off the string a little bit. So I was talking a little bit about that. Um, I was talking about the gypsy spirit of the Chardash, you know, and, uh, um, and I was encouraging you to be even more experimental. You know, actually, your job as a student is to just try everything and then do so much that we as teachers say, OK, OK, that's enough. Now maybe a little less, a little less. Perfect. You know? <laughs> so your job as a student is just to go like gangbusters all the time, um, and which is great. Uh, there was also, let's see, uh, there are two other things. I, I, I just listened to it just now, so it's fresh. Um, one was there's a high E harmonic in the, um, in the slow section. Mm -hmm. And this was unusual that you played it on the E string. And you played it very well. And I just commented that I had always done it going all the way up on the A string. It's kind of like a little feature. And so I encourage you to consider that. Um, and then the last thing was, it was just kind of a timing thing. You know, he writes poco a poco, uh, retardando, and it seemed like it was very, it was a very sudden shift in, in tempo. And so I talk about um, how we want to keep the momentum going a bit and, and not come to such a slowdown. But it's just my own personal sense of it. I mean, you played it very well. So, I mean, you really... You played it very sincerely and uh, and authentically, and you know that would have stood up very well in any case. So, sixth grade, sixth grade. Let me see. I and I told you the story about when I went. Um, uh, I had the opportunity to play this piece myself with a gypsy band, a real gypsy band in Budapest, Hungary, when I was when I was just fourteen years old. So a little older than you are now. Um, but uh, we were there. It was 1977. It's a long time ago. Uh, I had just come out of a, a of a, a lesson myself, and I had my violin, and we went to a famous restaurant uh, in downtown Budapest. And my parents said, "Hey, why don't you go play with that gypsy band? I'll bet they know that piece." And of course, a very famous piece. And I did, and that was uh, it was a, a tremendous influence on me because uh, when you play with people, that's where it their musicality just kind of soaks in to you, you know? And uh, so I've always been able to do a little bit of the gypsy thing, you know? <laughs> it's a great thing to, to do. So let, let me ask you, uh, uh, Miss, I mean, that's a great, that's a great story. And it's what, a, what a wonderful story to share with Rena. I mean, because now it's, now that legacy, it's like paying it forward, having that experience and paying it forward to a sixth grader in Cresco, New Jersey. It's just an amazing, <laughs> right? It's just an amazing arc. Miss, Miss Ovshinsky and Rena, did you, did you select this piece together? Or was it something that Rena was already working on? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, so yeah, Rena's uh, Rena's private instructor, uh, and she were the ones who selected this particular piece. Um, Rena plays in my ensemble in school, but she's working privately um, with with an instructor one on one. So that's Rena can tell you more about that experience with her with her instructor. Okay, how did you select it, Rena? So it was a song that I did in fourth grade, but then we didn't really wow. know. Um, which song I should pick, and the only other option was Mozart, Concerto 5, and I've been working on that for one and a half years, and I've been pretty bored of that, so I decided to choose um, Chardash. Wonderful. Wow. Okay, I have to tell you, I think you're ahead of me now. Remember I was saying I started when I was two <laughs> years old. I got to the Monte Chardash when I was about 11, I think, 11 or so. So you, I think fourth grade would be younger than that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, wow, good you? for you. 
When did you start playing, Rena? How old were you when you started? I was in kindergarten. I was either five or six when I started okay. playing. So yeah, that's a good age. Her trajectory is a little bit steeper, maybe. But you know, we're we're all on the, we're all on the same path, right? We're all on the same <laughs> path. So, Rena, are you performing the same selection for the state festival? Uh, no, I'm playing um, Preludium and Allegro by Fritz Kreisler. <gasps> Great. Well, there's, wow. a, there's a preview. Mr. Sweet will be your adjudicator for that process again. Uh, so that's great. I saw that, Rena, if I could ask you, and then I'll ask Ms. Olshinsky the same uh, same question, different perspective. And I asked Mr. Sweet and Mr. Lamy, what would you tell students, Rena? Because you seem cool as a cucumber, kiddo. I don't know I don't know if you are, but you are so cool right now. How? What would you tell students who are preparing their videos now for the, uh, for the spring and state festival to really give it their best shot. What's your advice? Maybe just like don't sweat it and maybe like take a few shots at it, but like don't stress over it too much because then you're just going to make more mistakes than you usually do. Okay, that's great. It's great advice. That's, that's great, great advice. advice because I always like to tell my students that you know that, that kind of stress tightens everything up, and then you're like struggling against all that tension, right? You just have to be free, easy, loose. You know, don't worry about it. You know. Uh, we, when we get, uh, one of the things we like to say in the professional level, when we get to a concert, it's time to play time to perform. It's like practice time is over. <laughs> now it's time yeah. to play, you know? So, yeah. um, if you, it, and, and what's really hard, I, if I, if I could follow up on that is that when you're, you're, you, you practice so many hours, you're used to playing and like. Uh, uh, judging yourself as you're playing, right? You listen, you're like, oh my gosh, I missed that. No, I have to correct it. And you stop and you go and you correct it. Um, but when you're performing, it's totally different because you can't stop, right? You, you have to play. So I think um, what we've been saying kind of, and you said the same thing, not to stress it out and everything, but also just get that experience going of just have a playing through without stopping. You know, because uh, I see it, it becomes kind of a habit. I've even noticed students just have a habit of just stopping in a certain spot. You know, <laughs> they get to a place yeah. and they just stop. And I've seen yeah. it unless as they get, they stop. I'm like, okay, continue. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and they just stop because they've always stopped there. You know? Paralysis by analysis, right? right? Exactly. So, you know, that whole thing. And it's, it's kind of like surfing. It's like you're surfing yeah. the temporal wave, you know, of, right. of music yeah. making. <laughs> so, and Ms. Olshinsky, uh, uh, Olshinsky, let me ask you for our final, final question before I go to the next segment here. Um, uh, how, much of, how much of the festival, what Rena's work is, is, was an extension of what you're already doing in the school with your students? Was, it able to, was, was the festival able to support what you're doing with the kids rather than something else that you needed to do? Well, I think, I think what it becomes um, for us is something, rather than supportive, I'm going to call it supplemental. Um, right. So for a student like Rena, who is in a, a group of other sixth graders who are maybe not at her level, um, this is an opportunity for her to expand her uh, experience and to go ab beyond, above and beyond what we're able to provide for her in, in a classroom setting um, and provide additional challenge and, and opportunity for you know, something that's going to be stimulating in a way that maybe some of our ensemble music isn't always going to be for someone who's playing at her level. So um, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to to give a student like Rena uh, that extra challenge and make sure that they're staying involved and excited about the music they're performing. Well, that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. That's one of the one of the goals of the festival was to be able to do that. And we're thrilled to be able to provide that opportunity. Rena, it was it was a, a pleasure to meet you. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm hoping you enjoy the experience of meeting uh, Mr. Sweet and, and listening for, to him in the next round. And we wish you all the best as you get ready to perform for the state festival. OK, Mr. Oshinsky, thanks for being here with us. Thank you so much. And we wish you, you well. Good luck to all your students. Have a wonderful evening, guys. Thank you. you. I have fun. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye to Mr. Sweet for now. I'm going to bring back Mr. Lamy, and I'm going to bring in uh, some of his private students who also performed for the Winter uh, Festival. Uh, and that's Patrick Sun, Kevin Chu, and Cameron Chu. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. 
How's it going? Everything okay? Yep, yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks. How are awesome. You? Awesome. Yeah. One, another one of their colleagues, Timothy Lien, was unfortunately unable to be with us today. But I did want to mention that um, these three young men participated in the Winter Festival and also all received gold stars, gold one stars. And uh, Patrick received a score of 28 out of 30. And Kevin and Cameron both received perfect scores, 30 out of 30. Um, now, Mr. Lamy was not their adjudicator um, uh, because I didn't, you know, we didn't think it was appropriate to have the teacher be the adjudicator, although he, was, he would probably be much tougher on them than, <laughs> than just about anybody else, I would imagine. Um, they, have, they all guilty, have smiles, but, Mr. Lamy. Guilty. Guilty. They're, all but, smiling. <laughs> they're, they're great players. They're all great musicians. So, of course. Uh, you know, I'd give one of them a 30 every day of any day of the week. And, uh, turn, you know, needle the other guys to catch up just for fun. We, we'd make a game out of it. So sure. they're all I, 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 well, I think level, wonderful level. What I think is fascinating, and, and I'm, I can't wait to hear it when you guys submit it, is these, these four young musicians uh, with under the direction of Mr. Lamy have, are putting together a, uh, are working on a, a clarinet quartet. So it's a, a gold star quartet of musicians that are putting this ensemble together. We're thrilled, first of all, that we're, you know, we're in a point now where we can rehearse safely and perform safely for this to happen, but we can't wait to hear your performance, guys. So, Mr. so Andy, you wanna tell us a little bit about how this came together and then uh, we can hear from the students about their perspective? Well, I've been lucky enough to work with these, these four people for quite a while and the quartet pre-existed the festival and the festival is an opportunity for us to take uh, one of the pieces we've been working on, which is a favorite. Uh, it's Robert Russell Bennett, who's an important American arranger and a lesser known American composer. Uh, can any of you guys uh, say something about Bennett, something that you might know about him? I know you've a composer or about the music? Uh, either one. Well, music. the music is very non-traditional. Like if you listen to it, there's a lot of dissonance and it's not very classical. You know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The opening is like a Paris nightclub. And so while it it's, uses extended harmonies like 11 and 13 chords, uh, but it still has a recognizable harmonic language of something jazzy or, or cabaret. And then it gets right. into a Mahlerian scherzo section that's very dark. Gotcha. You, uh, as it's an a, amazing contrast. My, my, a lot of my, you know, a lot of my playing is in concert and symphonic bands and in jazz bands. And I know Robert Robert Bus, Russell Bennett for his suite of American dances and his Broadway uh, writing and stuff. So I'm very intrigued to hear um, um, what this what this piece will bring. Um, so so guys, what's the difference in your in your perspective? And I know, I know that I've, I found out tonight that the quartet existed before the festival, which is amazing. But what's the difference in preparing a quartet for something like this? I mean, other than obviously scheduling and other than your own individual video and your own solo. Patrick or Cameron, to hear from you. Well, first of all, we have to like get all four of us in the room together. And then you have to really make sure you actually know your part really well because you don't because when you're practicing for like a solo, it's like, okay, I'll just practice and then record it when I want to. But now you need to make sure that you're ready for the, like a quartet where you're like other people are relying on you to know your part well. And I feel like that's, um, I don't know, I have to really work hard and make sure that I'm, you know, there and I bring my best every time. And then to add on that. to that a little bit. It's sure. not just learning your part. You also have to learn the other people's parts because it's a quartet. It's not four solos. You have to learn how your part like fits in and how each part, all four parts, they stick together and they come apart and where that happens. Especially in Bennett, where each part is extremely connected and the next part starts right in the middle of the first part or the other way around. Yeah. That's uh, w wouldn't it be great if, if if all of society worked out well together, guys? If we all just listened to one another, knew knew what the other person was thinking and doing, and just decided to work together toward one one. Uh, now, now I'm getting on my soapbox. Let me get off my soapbox. So, God, where do you guys go to school? Do you all go to school together? Or are you from different campuses? Where are you from? 
Um, I go to Milburn High School. Okay. Oh, I'm James Patrick, but I'm the grade below him. Okay. And I'm from Union County Magnet High School, so. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think Timothy is in Livingston, I think. Yeah, okay. Livingston. Okay. That's wonderful. We That's all wonderful. knew each other before this from orchestra, so. From, from the NJSO, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's great. Is now, now Andy, um, in, in this quartet, I mean, I, and I think Kevin may have said it best, is that all, all, all the parts are so integrated, so important. But do you, do the students lead themselves in this process? How, what kind of, is it a democracy or is it a, a lamocracy? Is it, is it Andy telling them what to do here? Uh, definitely both. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very granular and detailed and insistent about, you know, lining up rhythms and style. But uh, when we had our, our live rehearsal, uh, I did one conducted run through and then Cameron ran the second one. And awesome. he gave the old sniff and bounce cue and breathing. <laughs> and actually Robert Russell Bennett determined who gave that next cue ah. and who made that next motion. Because there's a spot where the Mahlerian fugue starts and it goes, I think four, then two, then three, then one enters just in this layered, um, staggered sort of entrance. And it really grows up to something. And these guys feel all these interesting rhythms. They have different rhythms at the same time. Suddenly the lowest voice is the lead voice and the high voices have to really become ethereal in order for the balance to work. And they learn the orchestral lesson of pianissimo may mean rather loud if that's what's needed in the context at that moment so interesting interesting anyway uh my my hope is to give them a good push and let them run it from here out and uh the, halfway through our last rehearsal i was just walking around with a video camera just enjoying that's awesome that's awesome is that true Patrick? I mean, yeah i remember okay. that <laughs> Are the three of you also uh, entering as soloists for the state festival as well? Yeah. Right? Yep. And can you can you share what you're performing for that? I'm playing Weber's first concerto, the first movement. Great. I'm playing Weber's third concerto. Actually, wait, no. I'm playing Crusoe's con the concerto, Opus Eleven, Movement Three. I think I was okay. going to play Weber, but I switched off. <laughs> Crusoe okay. was an influence of Weber. But mm -hmm. Weber was just downstream by 10 years. Yeah, and I'm playing uh, John Mayer's Raga music. Okay. That's Indian, amazing. Indian music written by an Indian composer. That's amazing. That's interesting. We have a, I, I just, we just accepted, right before the end of the deadline, a young man from Ridge, New Jersey, on alto saxophone, is also doing an Indian piece. So that's amazing. We love that. I mean, we, I, you know, we're thrilled to be as open – uh, as possible because you know it's it's for 2021 for goodness sake in New Jersey we need to celebrate all these different cultures right and and put them in perspective it's wonderful that you're you go from Robert Russell Bennett to you know that what a, what a diverse um, world for you Kevin it's amazing that's great and and Weber to Russell Robert Russell Bennett that's great Ken okay, Andy you were about to say well, something one of the keys is to have good sources to listen to because uh, we listen to uh, John McCaw for whom the piece was written. And he does a nice lecture and performance of the work. So we're using that as a very, very powerful reference for Kevin. Uh, okay. But also listening to the source, the traditional music, the ragas and the Hindustani and the, uh, and, and the uh, other influences on this particular music. Uh, but in the end, it's just Kevin, you know. Yeah. And yeah. that final recording session when you step up to do it, it, it always seems like you have two or three or four chances, but really it comes down to that one run through. And so we try to play the game of you're going to play a wrong note. Try to just keep going and sell it. Cause when right. you get to the end, that may be your best performance. And if you said something musically, then people will forget the wrong note. They really right. will. Patrick, Kevin, and Cameron, it, what, what do you, in, in the closing moments here with you, I could talk to you guys all night. Um, we have obviously there's a lot of students, you know, uh, over 900, uh, 800 students participating in the spring and in the, in the state festival. They're all getting ready, just like you are. What's what's your advice? 
Let's start with Cameron. What's your advice for the students getting ready for this festival? I would say uh, just do, just play like no one is watching. Just do your own best and pretend that you're just playing for yourself. And that really you should just take off a lot of the tension. Don't worry about it because odds are if you like what you're playing, everyone else is going to like it as well. That's great. That's great. How about you, Patrick? Hmm. Not too sure I have that much advice. Um, I'd say try to start your recording as early as possible. Make sure that you have everything down, but don't wait until the last minute to record. Give it at least like a week because I did that last time and I know it made me extremely stressed and it took me like 700 tries. So definitely do not do okay. what I did. <laughs> okay. Okay. Appreciate that. Kevin? And on the topic of stress, it helps a lot <laughs> if you if you don't try to go, all right, this is going to be the perfect one and I'm going to do it this time. It helps a lot if you think, all right, I'm going to do three takes today, three takes tomorrow, and three takes the day after, and I'll pick from that. It doesn't help if you go, I'm going to go and go and go until I get the perfect one, because that just builds stress, and then that makes it even harder to get the perfect one. Gotcha. And you don't even need the perfect one. You just need uh, the really good one. Gotcha. Uh, all great advice. I mean, and it sounds like you're listening to Andy because uh, I think he shared a lot of the same advice earlier. This is this is great. It was it was a pleasure to meet you, Patrick, Cameron, and Kevin. Um, it was it was really a pleasure to me. I could talk to you, like I said, all night. And and I wish you all the best, uh, not only with your solo endeavors but with the ensemble as well. And I can't wait to hear you. So, have a good night, fellas, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. Take care. All right, folks. Now, how can we how can we top that? We're going to bring Mr. Sweet back, and now we're going to add with us this evening Miss Judy Lee, a New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. Now, Judy, I want to. I always. I, I'm going to mess your title up. You're your director of community operations, or you know, you, <laughs> don't worry, I do too. It's <laughs> it's it's a mouthful, uh, and it's a little new right now too because it's uh, being oh. adjusted. So I'm the director of um, operations and community programs currently. Okay. Operations and community programs. It was a pleasure to see you here. Thank you so much for being here with us this My evening. And having these these gentlemen with us, um, you know, two great segments, right? It was wonderful to meet this young sixth grade violinist who's playing, you know, Chavez and Mozart, and and uh, what's, what's, what piece is she playing in the spring now, Brendan? I forgot already. Krieger. Oh, there's the Chardash. Oh, 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 oh the, uh, it was the sorry, Prelude, uh, Chrysler, uh, Fritz Chrysler. Chrysler's Preludium and Allegro. And that was actually the, on the regionals some a little while ago. So it's and very high the, level. These three, you know, amazing young clarinetists playing such a diverse, you know, high level repertoire and right here, right here in the state of New Jersey, you know, and we're bringing all this to the fore and, you know, with working with Arts Ed and we're thrilled now to be working obviously as a partner with, with NJSO providing all these great opportunities. Obviously, first and foremost, the most, the most immediate impact was the um, the influence of Brennan and Andy as adjudicators, right? Um, and I, I want to also mention we had two other members of the orchestra as adjudicators for the Winter Festival, and that was Martin Anderson, uh, the violist with the with the symphony, and Miss Ha Young Jun, uh, the principal double bassist. And now, if I was correct, uh, Judy, uh, Ha Young did her adjudication from South Korea. She was away when this. <laughs> she did. She did. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I guess that's the silver lining these days, right? right. You can right. do these things overseas. It can be at a complete different time zones, um, right. and all different parts of the world, even. So yeah, she did. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm glad you brought it up. And you know, as as dark and we we discussed it earlier, as dark and challenging as this time has been for all of us, and especially the kids. You know, the the fact that they were able to have an adjudicator from across the globe, you know, give them that kind of feedback was is priceless, right? And and like Brennan just said, they can download it. It's, I mean, they can have that with them forever. You know, when you go to a festival, they give you a sheet of paper with the comments. Okay, you keep it, but now you can go back and really listen and listen to your performance. So that's wonderful. So um, we also have a, a, a amazing quote here when we when we when we forged this partnership with Arts Ed and, and Bob Morrison. And 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 uh, NJSO, 
And we have a, I'd like to read it from, from the uh, CEO of the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. Let me, have, let me make sure I say his name correctly. Mr. Ga Gabriel Von Alst, is that correct? I yes. I have to read this to the folks listening. Um, he, his statement is, this festival is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the incredible accomplishments of talented young musicians across New Jersey. Art said New Jersey and the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra share core values of serving students statewide and NJSO musicians are delighted to serve among the festival adjudicators. And I just thought that was beautiful um, for, for, for us to be working together in that capacity. I mean, you know, again, when I was with Elizabeth, I saw the the long lasting effects that, of these kids being able to sit next to these musicians and during a break, just get these quick little lessons and be able to play. Everybody was lifted by that experience, right? And here we have the same thing in a remote setting. Um, so, and we're looking forward to adding a couple of more adjudicators for the spring and state festival. Uh, but we have some more news uh, that we'd like to share this evening. And I, I think I'm gonna turn it over to Judy to talk about this, right, Andy? We're gonna turn it over to Judy to, to, to share what, what we have in store for the students. Sure. Well, I want to first, by thanking Dennis um, Argo and Arts at New Jersey for this opportunity for the NJL NJSO to be part of such a meaningful event. Um, I know all of our judges had a great time being part of um, this project, and we look forward to hopefully many years going forward. Um, and after learning so much um, of these amazing students, and even just now listening to these amazing kids, we are proud to say that um, at the end of this festival in the last couple of weeks of June, we will be providing some master classes for, um, for students who receive Go Star um, ratings. So the details are still being worked out at exact time and date, um, but we are happy to be able to provide all different instrumentations. So it's not just for violin or clarinet, we'll be able to do all instrument families and I'll be working with Dennis very closely to, um, to make that announcement and we'll get the schedule out to the students. So work hard, well, we, can, we can wait to hear you live. Yeah, that's, what, a, what an amazing, amazing opportunity. I, have to, I, I, I wanna give the numbers out, okay, if I can. I, I know we're still, we're still holding on to the schedule, but Andy and Brennan, so we have, we had a, a string orchestra participate for the uh, fall, for the winter festival, which had 18 oh. members. We had 23 violinists, one violist, make gold star, a, a violin viola duet, a violin cello duet, three cellists, two bassists, 16 flautists, 15 clarinets, five oboists, an English hornist, three bass clarinets, two bassoon, two trumpet, six French horn, 17 trombones. My, my brothers and sisters in the trombone section brought it that way. Two euphoniums, one tuba, and nine percussions for a total of 130 students. No partridges. I'm sorry, Andy, and a partridge in a pear tree. And yeah. you know a lot about birds. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, so 130 students are going to be able to benefit from this experience uh, where, where some of them are going to actually be participating as, as performers with the teachers as well, which is great. And, and you've also opened it up where uh, the students that didn't gold one star can also attend the, the master classes. So they could be participants in, in learning from these two masters here and the other folks that you have. Um, um, so, I mean, Brennan, Andy, what, what kinds of tricks and of the trade do you have in store for these young musicians in June when they come into your master classes and want to, want to sit at the feet of the master? What, what, what kind of, what, what should these students be prepared to do for you during the month of June when they come to these classes? Go ahead. <laughs> you it's you know you, you uh, any anyone who calls you a master uh, makes you think of your teachers and your mentors, and you're like, oh, I don't measure up to those masters. Are you kidding? Uh -huh. And it turns out that Michelle Zakowski and Mitchell Lurie they also tell the same stories about their masters. So there is a lineage here of passing things from things from generation to generation, and. I don't know about mastery, but I do, do know that when you spend decades listening and trying to process and understand and produce music and performances that are meaningful, uh, it gives you a lot of ideas. So one thing that I will do 
going in to prepare for a master class, especially if it's a remote one, is to get ready to play all that music myself. I want to be able to demo it myself in real time or in a recorded demo or something. And uh, also be able to point to great artists and great players. Uh, you know, who, who, if you play French horn, who should they be listening to? You know, who are the people who will give them a sense of the Neapolitan opera or the Berlin Philharmonic or some New York uh, commercial studio stuff with a little bit of a diverse American backbeat to it? Who should you be listening to for that piece? So, uh, so that's it. Remote master classes and teaching. I, I try to keep on my game and play myself. Keep busy playing, uh, and try to show the articulations and the phrasing, the decay, the, the pacing, as much as possible. But listening, if you guys can listen seventy-five times to some great artists before you, uh, you know, feel that you've listened enough. Uh, too many students will listen two or three times and be like. Check mark. And that's only going to get you, um, you know, through the first layer of the onion in terms of processing all those levels of detail and meaning. Yeah, it's a great, it's a so, great metaphor, it's a great example. How about you, Brennan? Okay, I mean, fantastic. Um, so I was going to say, you know, a master class. It's an opportunity to learn, and uh, I always feel like I'm always learning. I mean, I learn, I learn so much from from my students and all the students playing. I feel like everyone has something to offer. Um, so I'm always open to like learning new things. And I'll discover new things. You know, someone will play something I've never even thought about that before. Interesting, you know? And so I, I'm constantly learning myself. So if you can think of it as a friendly, um, uh, supportive, encouraging environment. You know, uh, we we just want to help in any way we can. Um, we will will assist. So when you play for a master class, we're from our perspective, we're listening to you, and we're trying to figure out things we can say that would also help other people too, who are also doing your what you're doing. And if you have an issue with something, whatever it is. Others probably have the same issue. So the idea is is to really help everyone, uh, you know, and and to be a really, a, it should feel, you should feel very, you know, fulfilled and and like you really learned a few things. And so I know it's hard to put yourself out there. It really is. But just be brave and just, and just know that we're all very friendly. We were all there ourselves, you know, and, you know, we really want the best for you. We want, we want to help in any way we can. And, you know, we're really enthusiastic about music. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing, what we love. And it's so wonderful to hear students play and, uh, and to hear their ideas. So I encourage you just be true to yourself, just play your thing and, and then be open to whatever we, uh, you know, we'll try and say good things for you, <laughs> you know, th things that are yeah. helpful for you and others. Um, so don't be afraid. <laughs> That's, I mean, such great advice. And, you know, as a teacher for a long, long time um, at a, in a public school setting, you know, that's that's the toughest part of, of what you both of you said is to get students to be active listeners when they're not directly involved in the message from the teacher. So when when you're in a master class and, and Andy's working with Judy, you and I shouldn't tune out because there's still the process there is important. Very, very often something that Andy tells us or Judy will tell us also reflects to me. And then going back to Andy's word, listen, right? Be receptive and listen. That's why these musicians are, I mean, the, the three gentlemen we had on with Andy and, and, and uh, Rena are such terrific musicians is because they are listening, because they are, you know, self-assessing and because they are, you know, always looking to improve. So that's a, that's a great lesson for all of us. I hope I um, can't wait to get to June and watch these kids in action. Um, go, ahead, go ahead, Andy. What I really like is hearing other teachers talk because every time someone creates a new image and offers it to the students, it gives a different mental structure of how to assess what they're hearing. Uh, or, you know, half the time you'll hear what your own private teacher has been telling you for a long time but in different words. And it really is exciting to hear uh, how my NJSO colleagues, I'm constantly just in youth orchestra, just in our uh, 
in our forums on the Saturdays, I'm always hearing great expressions and turns of phrase from my colleagues. And I think that's great. But also, you'll always hear something new from a different teacher, something you never heard. So uh, I was, I was, you know, Brandon was talking about breathing. Well, we win players often, and I think my students will attest to this, we think about Boeing. Oh. Because we have to learn how to capture the kinetic connection between Boeing and articulation and phrasing and direction and intensity, mm. color. And you guys have a million different ways of Boeing. Uh, and mm. so why should wind players be limited? Why can't we use the image of Boeing to yeah. build our mental map of where we can go with our own sounds? So yeah. that, that's what I love about master classes. Right, it's, it really is a community of learning, just just learning from each one of the members, right? Right. So, so Judy, what else? What's good? Share with us. I mean, we have a couple of minutes before I do my wrap up here. Uh, and again, thanks. So thankful for the three of you to be with us tonight. What's what is what do we have to look forward to with NJSO as as science is starting to get us back out, maybe into the concert hall and these. What 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 can you share with us? That's exciting. Oh. NJSO. We are just as excited. Um, you know, this past 15 months has been very challenging, um, but I have to hand it to our musicians. They're amazing. We have, if you have, have, haven't have had a chance to, to check out our website, we have some amazing virtual contents that is existing that's there. So please go and watch as many as you want. I know everyone has Zoom fatigue these days, but if there's, if you, you're one night you're tired, you're just lay, lay, laying there, there's some great content for you to, um, to enjoy. Um, but as for the future, we're definitely planning a lot of concerts that's coming up. Um, our next season, we, can, we don't have it completely ready to announce yet, but we are working with many external partners to, pre to, um, present, to present chamber music concerts. So um, that's definitely coming up. And as we slowly get back to normal, as we would say it, you know, we need to start, we need to start responsibly. So with smaller ensemble first, to making sure that we're presenting these live concerts safely. So that's our first step for the summer. And eventually when we're ready um, to get back on stage, hopefully we'll be able to get back on sometime in the fall. Um, and that's, you know, that's what we're aiming towards too. And I know I'm sure Andy and Brandon will, will vouch for that. We're all so excited and we cannot wait to do it. Um, we have been together recording some things on the NJPAC stage, but we haven't been able to welcome any audience back. So that's, that's our next step. I wanted to share a, a link that was provided to us. Um, you will hit, you have it there at www.njsymphony.org backslash education slash service backslash youth orchestras. Uh, the, the, I think the three gentlemen, uh, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but the three gentlemen we met earlier all met each other here in this organization, right? Well, they may have met through me as a private teacher and then uh, met each other. My grand student is Timothy Lien because his private student was someone I started on the clarinet. He came to me as a saxophonist as a William Patterson undergrad. So, Wonderful. Uh, so, so there's that. And one of those students wanted to refer a friend for audition information. And I, I was wondering... That's where you go to. So that's the web. Yeah, if you go there, yeah, if you go to that website, that's you have all the registration information for our youth orchestra. Wonderful, wonderful. And you know, this youth orchestra is it bends and it doesn't break. The management is really good. It's really warm. And if something's not clear on a website because information out in society is changing all the time, just sure. send a message. Uh, someone sure. will get back to you. They'll find an answer. They'll get back to you. Absolutely. I think Judy might be the only one faster than me at returning emails. I'm a little <laughs> jealous. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fight to the same. No one's faster than you, Dennis, but Judy <laughs> right up there. It's well, amazing. listen, Andy, Brennan, Judy, it was a pleasure to see you tonight, guys. And uh, I look forward to your input to our students. And Judy, we're going to be working together a long time, I hope. Okay? I Thank sure you so much. So. Thank Thanks you. So much, it's guys. a pleasure. Good night. Take care. All right. Good night. Take Thank care. you. Good night. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this evening's um, uh, live stream of Festival Fun Facts. And 
you know, this announcement of the masterclass series that the NJSO is going to be providing for our gold one star students is unbelievable. Um, getting some comments now from some of our educators. Thank you. Uh, NJSO from Dan Massey. What a fantastic opportunity. Great points from John Zazali. Yes, John, Broadway announced today they are selling 100% capacity for September. I hope that everybody does the right. Well, I, I got my second vaccine not, not uh, just over a week ago. I had COVID in January. I still can't smell and taste. It's not fun, but I feel so much safer now uh, having done what the scientists have uh, uh, indicated we should do. So I'm hoping everybody follows suit and we're able to make music. More and more of my colleagues uh, are, are having their students uh, be able to perform. They're coming back to school. Uh, they're performing. These kids are getting ready for this festival and it's just cathartic to hear 30, 40 students sitting, even with, with mitigation, with PPE and masks and puppy pads and bell covers, just to be able to play you know, a cadence <laughs> and hear that resonate, you know, that, that community come together has been an amazing experience. Um, a reminder back to, back to some nuts and bolts, excuse my puppy Gus is saying hello to the Amazon delivery. I'm sure. Um, pup, uh, the uh, VF, uh, video and PDF submissions are due by May 15th. I know you got great advice tonight. Listen, relax, early recordings, maybe one, two or three, pick the best one. We know you have it in you, right? And if you have any questions between now and then, Dennis at Artsed New Jersey is my email address. I promise I'll get back to you as soon as possible because I know time is important and we don't have a lot of it um, before then, okay? Um, this is our last live stream until after the state uh, slash spring festival, but stay tuned because uh, we, we are going to have some news about what this festival, the New Jersey State Soul and Ensemble Festival, is going to look like for the 2021-2022 year. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we may change shape a little bit, but we're gonna be back because we feel it's, imp it's important to provide this opportunity for our students and teachers. So good night, uh, prepare your video submissions and PDFs, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon, guys. Take care.